In this video, we're going to talk about the top five problems we found with the O3 element, and that's O3 to 11, only one gen. Number one, major oil leak. Now, if you look on the internet, out there in the YouTube world, you're going to see a million of these being changed. It's right back here, and it's the VTCS, Variable Timing Control Solenoid. That gasket, boy does she leak. This thing just pours out loose puddles on the ground. So if yours is leaking, check us out because actually I changed this particular one on a video. So another little extra bonus on number one problem is code P2646. And that has to do with the same solenoid. What happens is it gets clogged and it activates during high RPMs for oil pressure. So that code tells you you have low oil pressure, which you probably don't, but the best way to diagnose it real quick is obviously check your oil level. If it's low, it's gonna set that code. If your oil is dirty, it is gonna set that code. You must, when you put a new solenoid in, you must do an oil change at the same time. Don't put the new solenoid in, start it up, make sure it works, and then do the oil change. You wanna drain this oil, even while you're doing the solenoid. Let all this oil drain out for a good hour or so get it out as much as possible, and then keep up on your oil changes because those valves, that solenoid has a little screen in that solenoid valve. If dirt gets in it, it gets stuck open and you're gonna get a faulty code every time. Number two, your element won't start. Put the key in, turn it, and it cranks, but it won't start. You look over here in this little window of this instrument cluster and there's a little green key, and that key is just flashing, it's like pulsing. That means that this key responder is not getting a message to the ignition switch. Now this switch you can change out as a DIYer. It's not that difficult, but it has to go to the dealer to get programmed. Unless you know of someone aftermarket that has the actual tool to program the key to the ignition switch, maybe somebody does. Do a few phone calls, but you can save a lot of money by putting the switch in yourself and just getting it towed someplace. Number three happens to be code PO325, knock sensor code. And what a lot of techs are writing on this, so if you are a DIYer in a home and you removed your transmission because you did your own clutch or you had an automatic transmission, some reason you moved it, even the starter, techs are writing that they have a code for a knock sensor after they have removed the transmission, no matter whether it's an automatic or standard. And that's because where they mount it, it mounts in the front of the block up in here, but the harness runs over the transmission. And I guess if you just pull slightly on that harness, it just tweaks that sensor and the harness sets a code. So you end up needing to replace the end of the harness and you might as well replace an oxen while you're there. Number four, so you've got this all wheel drive element and you got a bit of a shake. It's not a tire shake and it even happens inside parking lots. It's just a slight, you can feel the whole car kind of wobble a little bit. And on the highway, she really shakes bad. The whole car, not just the steering wheel, but the whole vehicle, it just vibrates it would be this lovely drive shaft. They're known for it. The carrier bearing here in the center breaks down. And that's got a slip joint in there. And then you have two little U-joints on each end, which are not changeable. You cannot change them like a full-size drive shaft, like on a regular truck. So you have to replace the whole shaft. It's kind of expensive, wicked easy job to do. And uh, it does solve the problem. Number five, not to be confused with number four. They both are a shake, but this shake is only on acceleration, mostly in parking lots. Like you, you accelerate and you go, and as, it, as you accelerate, it feels like the front end just goes and then picks itself up. You like that? Well, <laughs> it's your CV shafts. CV shaft stands, so CV stands for constant velocity. And these are your axles right here. This car is all wheel drive, so you're gonna have them in the rear and in the front but 90% of the time it's gonna be your front axles right here. And what happens is these balance boots, water will get underneath them eventually in time and they can crack or the joint itself gets really tight and seized up. So usually it's gonna be the outer part of it. You just replace the whole shaft. Don't try to rebuild them. It's actually costs more money and more time. So I hope those five problems helped you out. I hope you had fun watching. If you are not already a subscriber, please subscribe. So ring that bell, that turns on all your notifications so you won't miss any future videos.